insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. Oh, I didn't fix our lower third there. Shoot. Hang on a second. Let me fix this. <laughs> <sighs> I did everything else. This is what happens when I come back from from uh, break here and uh, I'm all discombobulated. I think you get all this stuff right, but no, I didn't. So... Quick fix on the fly. Everyone gets to see a blooper. Congratulations, everyone. So this is Insights into Teens. Episode 93. Year in Review. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my intelligent and motivated co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. So besides my little mess up there, how are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty well. Anything exciting going on today? Not that I know of right now. Things are just going to be kind of chill, I guess. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with chill. Nope. Uh, the podcast today is going to be kind of chill as well. Nice. We, uh, At your request, we decided to do something a little more laid back. Uh, no hard-hitting topics today. Yay. So we're going to kind of take a look at, uh, like the title is, says, uh, Year in Review. We're going to look at um, how the holidays were. We'll do some, uh, talk about some highlights of Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's. And then we'll talk about what we did over the holidays, some of the interesting activities that we did. And then we'll talk about getting back into the routine, some of the things that we've all struggled with. And then we'll uh, we'll have a little look ahead segment for the coming new year and see what's in store for us. All righty. So are we, before we get started, see, I'm from Rusty. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I've been out of practice for a while here. Yep. Before we get started, I do want to encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get our audio versions listed as Insights into Teens. Or the video versions of all of our podcasts are listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music, and Pandora. Uh, we would also encourage folks to reach out to us and give us some feedback. Tell us what you'd like us to talk about. Tell us what you'd not like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at Insights into Things. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things or on Instagram. We are at insights into things where you can get links to all that stuff. On our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Now, are we ready to get into it? Yes. All right, here we go. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about today was how were the holidays? So we celebrate uh, Hanukkah, yep. and we celebrate Christmas, mm -hmm. and we kind of celebrate New Year's yeah, as much kinda. as you can. Yeah. So why don't you give us a recap of Hanukkah? How did it go? Did you get things that you thought were cool or fun? Were did we, we did we do all the things that we normally do? Give us your 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 summary of Hanukkah. So Hanukkah happened before Christmas and holiday break. Um, so I would say that we did do the usual traditions of lighting the menorah, um, singing the song uh, during during the part where we light all three menorahs and the whole switcheroo every night. Um, and the old menorah switcheroo. Yeah, that's um, 
When did we even start that? Uh, we've been doing it for a while now. We just have different menorahs that we tend to use. Yeah. Um, and then, yes, the ending where we all give each other presents. So did you get anything you really liked? Yes, I did. I got quite a few things as well. Um, one of them um, was a double pack where one was um, a magic eight ball, but it was the world's tiniest magic eight ball. And I kind of use it just because, like, okay, so I want to see what the future is like. Can I, like, I ask a yes or no. You basically ask a yes or no question, shake it, and it gives you an answer. Nice. Yeah, I got a, I got a number of really cool things for Hanukkah, too. And it's, it's hard. I'm the type of person, if I want something, I just go out and get it. Yeah. And I, and, you know, my main interest is, Star Wars, so I have a lot of Star Wars stuff. If you can tell from the uh, <laughs> decoration in the studio. So mommy always has a problem finding stuff, and she did a great job. And I think the one that that I like the most, because I think I'm getting the most use out of, and I don't have it with me. I would have brought it up to show it off. She got me a, um, a Darth Vader uh, holder for my Apple EarPod Pros. Mm -hmm. And this thing... Because I always had something in there so I could keep it on my keychain. But this one is so thick that it's like bulletproof. I've dropped them probably four or five times now because <laughs> they're all on my keys. Um, but it, it, it's really cool. And I've gotten a couple of comments already on it about, about how cool it looks. Yeah. Mommy actually had a pretty difficult time with me as well. Because uh, I am not as... Uh, you know, I don't have a wish list of stuff I want for Christmas anymore. I just have vague ideas of what I want, but Mommy was able to satisfy all of them because I really had no expectations of what I was going to get. I just had things that I liked. So she kind of had a rough time, but I definitely think she made the most out of it. Yeah, and total props to Mommy for for taking care of all the Hanukkah stuff. I don't think I got mm -hmm. any Hanukkah stuff for you this year. I'm just not very good at that sort of thing, and, and Mommy seems to excel at it. Yeah, the funny thing was, um, the one Hanukkah present she got me, along with uh, the Magic 8-Ball, was a SpongeBob uh, magnet blind bag, and we had to go to Hot Topic because I was also doing shopping for you guys. And it was kind of funny because, like, she had found something for me, and I found something for her and you, and we ended up having to hide each it from each other that's because. funny yeah when you're shopping together like that that's tough yeah so that was hanukkah we did pretty good with hanukkah um uh, i think everything went off without a hitch we didn't really play dreidel though did we never no, really we got didn't. a chance to play dreidel so but what else did we do for hanukkah uh let's see what else did we do for hanukkah What's the fried delicacy mommy makes? Oh, yeah. Uh, potato pancakes, a.k.a. latkes. Which you don't like. Yeah, but I got tater tots, so right. it's kind of a similar thing. Right. So we did that. We did... Uh, jelly donuts. Jelly donuts. What else did we do? Anything else that's of note? Um, sour cream and applesauce. We have those. We have, right. We have that with the latkes. I'm more of a sour cream person than an applesauce. Applesauce yeah. is a little sweet for me. And I'm more of an applesauce person than a sour cream person. Yeah. But Hanukkah was good. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's it's kind of nice to spread the holiday over eight days. Mm -hmm. um, with Christmas, it's like this big giant build up, and then it's one night and it's over and done with. Yeah. Uh, but with Hanukkah, it's kind of nice. You spread it over. You get to enjoy a whole week's worth of, of festivities with it. Mm-hmm. So another good Hanukkah. So let's talk about Christmas. So what did we do? Uh, our Christmas was kind of, I don't know, subdued, I guess, this year because of the pandemic. We didn't do a lot of the stuff that we normally do around Christmas time. Yeah. But let's talk about Christmas itself. What was Christmas morning like? What were, How were your presents? How did all that stuff happen? So um, I know that a lot of people think like... Younger kids get up really early and, like, wake up their parents super early and are, like, dying to open the presents. I apparently was never like that. No, well. you weren't. And <laughs> I always thought that was kind of funny because I was like that. You know, I was the type of person 
I hated going to bed Christmas Eve. And I got up killer early. Like I'd wake up at five o'clock in the morning and drive my parents crazy. Uh, But you've never been like that. In fact, I was the first one up Christmas morning this year. Yeah. Like I was, I was kind of awake, but I didn't want to get up. It was kind of like, I'm not an early bird person at all, which kind of, I guess, factors into the fact that I don't really wake up early on Christmas uh, morning. So once I heard you, I'm like, okay, sure, I'll get up. All right, so, you know, let me ask you, you didn't get a lot of presents this year? Nope. I think Mommy got the most. Mm-hmm. But she deserves like them. a factor of three. Yeah, she certainly yeah. does deserve them. And it was mostly small stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so what was the highlight of the presents that you got this year? What was what was your favorite thing? Uh, what did you enjoy the most? Mm. I can't really decide because... Like, if you get a bunch of presents, like, there's that one big present that you remember, but I got five smaller presents, but they all mean a pretty big ton to me. Um, some of the more memorable ones were were the one I got from Pepe, um, that giant art set that I'm, like, really enthusiastic because it has, like, oil pastels that I've, like, for some reason really been interested in ever since I started using them in art class, um, along with a bunch of other stuff for painting, so I'm gonna have to try that out soon. Um, another one was the Pusheen, uh, bag, which was just, like, um, a gift bag of three little Pusheen, uh, themed, uh, themed presents because I am a fan of Pusheen, so Mommy knew that at least, and I, and it came with this really amazing water bottle that I'm going to probably replace with my other, that I'm going to replace my other water bottle with, and then two blind bags, one was, like, well, both of them were, like, little mini, going to be, like, of little mini figures of Pusheen in different scenarios, one of them was themed on junk food, and the other was just... (laughs) Pusheen. <laughs> okay, you got your chemistry set too, right? You already cracked that open, didn't you? Well, yeah, that was from Hanukkah, though. Oh, that was Hanukkah, okay. Yeah. What else did you get? You got the robot, the robot right? The one f- that I'm going to be playing with Pumpkin with because, like, you also got it partly for Pumpkin as well. Right, so this robot's, like, fully articulated. You can control the arms and the head and it dances and stuff like that. Yep. So, all in all, decent Christmas? Yep, I'd say decent Christmas. Good. So, then the last holiday we really celebrated was, was New Year's. And we don't really do much for New Year's. We you know, we don't go out to parties or do parades. Not that they were doing parades this <laughs> year. So, we're kind of a, a home, stay-at-home type thing and watch everything on TV. Yeah. But what are some of the things that we do that kind of stand out to you for New Year's? Well, one of them is dinner. Um, for dinner, we typically have appetizers. Like, we have stuff that is mo- that's normally microwaved, like little bite snacks. Like, we have mozzarella bites, shrimp, and then we have other different versions. We have also have, like, regular mozzarella sticks and um, other stuff that uh, doesn't come to mind because the other stuff is just a bunch of other things that we just find that are snacky. Right. Yeah, we kind of do kind of multiple rounds of hors d'oeuvres throughout the night, kind of to get us through the night there. And we stay up and we watch the ball drop, right? Mm -hmm. Now, normally we watch uh, the countdown on uh, Disney's stream, which they didn't do this year. So this year we wound up, and we'll flip back and forth because that's, we'll usually keep that up on a tablet or something like that because it's a a web stream. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we'll keep up uh, the Dick Clark's New Year's Eve stuff on ABC. And this year it was all, you know, Dick Clark this year. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of strange because normally people pack into Times Square and (laughs) you didn't have a lot of people packed in there and they were all kind of corralled because of the pandemic. What were your thoughts on that? What what was your takeaway on that? I mean... For me, I really didn't notice it. It definitely was kind of weird to, like, not see, like, a huge crowd. 
Um, but I was kind of used to it, and I was glad everyone was being safe as well. Um, it was definitely kind of strange, but for some reason, it kind of felt normal as well. So they were able to 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 kind of keep that normal New Year's tradition alive as much as they could. Then, mm-hmm. any other highlights of New Year's you wanted to mention? Um, sometimes when it, when after it's midnight and it's New Year's Day, we would sometimes have, um, grape juice or... The sparkling cider. The sparkling cider. Um, and we'd, like, pour a drink for each of us and we'd, like, you know, clink it together. Uh, Make the clink sound. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And then, uh, say Happy New Year and, uh, drink. Yep. We all have a a toast of sparkling cider for the new year. Yeah. I always thought it was like. Which we didn't do this year because mommy couldn't get sparkling cider. Yeah. So, all right. So, what do you think? New Year's was okay, not Mm -hmm. okay, subpar. What do you think? It was fine. It was a decent New Year. Probably one that many people are going to remember. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, but. Hmm. I guess you make the most of it, right? Yeah, what can you do? All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, specific things we did during the holiday season itself. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We are doing a year in review, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we did over the holidays. So one of the big things that we do is we go and look at lights a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and normally we stick to one, maybe two places that we look at, uh, one being a drive through the other being a walkthrough. Well, things being the way they are this year, we kind of changed that up a little bit. Yep. So we went to three different drive throughs Yep. So the first one we went to was at the Bridgeport Racetrack. Mm -hmm. Uh, First year we've ever done that one. What are your thoughts on that one? And be perfectly honest. Being completely honest, I, it was a little subpar. Um, There was not many extreme lights and a lot of them were very spaced out, so after you got to see one, it was like you just waited to see the other one, like, and, like, although you got to appreciate the other, um, the lights as, since they were spaced out, since they really weren't the most eye-catching, it kind of got a little tiring after a while, and, of course, the scenery, um, was pretty dark, and, uh, I have to say the land wasn't the most smooth, so, um, uh, but they did have a happy Hanukkah sign, so. Nice. So is that something that you think we would do next year, or is it something maybe, if they continue to do it, we'll take a couple of years off and let them build it up a little bit? What do you think? Uh, probably let them, probably let them build it up a little bit. Um, I definitely wasn't the most, like, impressed by it since i've seen other lights um so it was a decent one for this year but probably one we won't be revisiting next year okay so the other one we had was creamy acres and they've done it for a few years in a row now but this was the first time that we've gone to it what were your thoughts on creamy acres i have to be honest that one was really much more impressive than the other one they had a lot more lights um, it lasted longer, and it had neat animations as well as music tunes. As 
the other one had music tunes as well, and I have to be honest, the music tune was the best of that one, and for this one, the music tune was a little bit off, but, um, the visuals were very nice, and it was def- and, like, they had a bunch more clustered together, and I think the clustered look looks a bit better than, um, the spaced out looks. So, Creamy Acres was a win over Bridgeport. Yeah. So, the other one that we do, and this is one that we've done numerous times year after year, was Shady Brook Farms. And how would you rate Shady Brook Farms' display? Shady Brook Farms was probably the best out of all of them. We went to them in order, and, like, we kind of built up our expectations. And, honestly, Shady Brook is always a great highlight because they have a lot of amazing um, visuals, and I have to be honest, they have, like, a lot... They're probably the biggest um, one, and I definitely favored it over all the others, although they definitely did put some big efforts into it. And um, and since we've gone to it year after year, I did actually see a bunch of new stuff that I hadn't seen before. Like, there was a giant candy cane factory um, light show, and it was something we had never seen before, and that was really interesting. Yeah, they they do a great job there, and and the fact that they're continuing to reinvest in it with new lights and maintaining the lights they have, um, and you know, the fact that they have you know special traffic cops out there and everything kind of lend themselves to the fact that it's really one of the largest ones in the area. Yeah, and I have to be honest, like their light animation was the best. Like there was this one a really amazing water scene where the waves actually look like they're moving. The yeah. Wave, and honestly, it's really impressive. Yeah. So they did a very good job there. Mm-hmm. So outside of doing the Christmas lights, we did a few other things. We were shut down. The podcast itself was shut down for several weeks while we did some extensive reworks on the studio. Yep. Uh, and you can probably see it from some of the angles and, and, and some of the shots that we have on the video here. Uh, we did a number of different things, some of which you had helped out with, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing was probably we have a new uh, processing computer in here. Uh, we were having some, some technical issues with the old one. So that one was pulled out. We have a brand new uh, i9 Intel system in here now. It's running the entire podcast, which is nice. We rewired the entire place. We took our monitors. We put them up on uh, swing arm monitor mounts to clear the desk space up a bit here. We changed up some of the configuration. If we, we take a look at this angle here, you can obviously see that we've moved the entire control board around a bit here. Yep. We have some more convenient wiring going on here. So it's... Hopefully, we'll be able to present a, a much better podcast. We won't have nearly as many technical glitches as we were having for a while there because they were getting pretty pretty frustrating from from certainly my engineering side of, of things to get things going. Mm-hmm. Um, so you helped a lot with the wiring, right? Yep. So tell us a little bit about what I had you doing. Well, at first you had me pulling all the plugs and helping you take out some of the com- some of the larger uh compu- some of the larger computers that a lot of the stuff was plugged into, um basically removing all the stuff, having a fresh clean start. And then I helped out with plugging some of the new stuff in, including the new wiring headphones. Right. Yeah, so that's the other thing that we have is we've got new uh New studio headphones, which actually sound really nice. Not that the other ones were bad, but yeah. uh, these ones are a little bit more on the professional side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, you did a very good job of helping me. Unfortunately, I don't, I, with my back and some of the ailments that I have, I just can't crawl around on the floor like I used to wiring stuff up. So you were very helpful in getting all the wiring out because we literally ripped everything out. All the equipment was ripped out. And then... Once I was ready for it, you were able to get back in there and wire everything back up. So everything under the desk, which used to be a real rat's nest, is now cleaned up now. Yeah, much cleaner than before. So hopefully we're presenting a a, a better, more professional-looking podcast at this point in time. If nothing else, at least I don't, I'm not going to 
you know, get tripped on the wiring anymore. Yeah, and I don't feel the wires on the wire on my feet anymore. So. Yeah. So we we when we started podcasting, we kind of grew the studio organically, adding new equipment and and options and stuff. And you know, we never really took the time to properly wire things up. So yeah. now now I think we're in good shape. So we also played some, we had some fun and games, right? Yep. So one of the things that we did, which we'll be doing another session tomorrow with your brother, Sam, is Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. So this was, I, I had used, I had played Dungeons and Dragons um, a very long time ago in high school. That's how I got introduced to it. Um, your first experience with it was a few weeks ago over the holidays what were your thoughts i really like it um of course i didn't know the whole logistics of it at first but after playing a few sessions i started learning it and i definitely think the story that sam had created for the game is very intriguing and i really like that it's an it's a way to express storytelling in game form as well um I, I've come up with, we've come up with characters, I'm thinking of my character's backstory and their personality, stuff like that, because I really like storytelling, and, well, this is kind of another good game for, a good game for it. So, so we all created characters, what kind of character did you create? Um, I created a, um... A tiefling? A tiefling, a tiefling ranger. Right. Um who was going who I kind of wanted who I kind of expected to be like a more mysterious kind of character because the tieflings um by their definition are shown to be kind of social outcasts so I had to kind of take that into consideration as well as their class since they're a ranger I wanted them to have a more foresty kind of part in their story like if they they probably lived in like an Ewok kind of village, that kind of thing. Interesting visualization. Yeah, I'm having um, a fun time coming up with that. So you're a tiefling ranger. Mommy was an elvish wizard? Yeah, she was an elf wizard. She was an elf wizard, and I came up with a dragonborn paladin. Mm-hmm. So we learned how to play. Mm-hmm. You know, Sam, Sam walked us through setting up the characters uh, we we walk through a very basic scenario right off the bat. Uh, how do you feel about the the rules so far and the mechanics of playing? You feel comfortable with it? Yeah, the rules are starting to make more and more sense. Um, we have we didn't have uh, the correct die at first, but now we're getting a few more better supplies, so things are definitely looking a little more uh, professional, <laughs> I guess. Right, we're professional D and D players now. Yeah, sure. Uh, had a had a couple of funny mishaps there. Why don't you tell us about one of those? Okay, so during the first time, once we were done creating all of our characters, we were able to play the uh, short part of the session. Um, and during the f- and sin- so basically the start of the story, we were all sent here by a friend with a um who sent us a letter. I'm guessing it was our dead friend, and we were supposed to go into the woods. And we ended up meeting up with some monsters who ended up attacking us. And when we had to try and attack back, Mommy, being a wizard, um, was going to use a fireball on one of the uh, monsters. And since you were helping out, um, you were right next to her. And she ended up rolling a one. And a critical miss. <laughs> and it ended up hitting you. <laughs> yeah, so I no longer stand anywhere near mommy if I can avoid it. Yeah, I mean, you weren't too hurt by it since you are technically already have fire protection because you're a dragon. Right. Um, but still. <laughs> yeah, that was that was kind of funny. We we had a lot of fun with that at mommy's expense. Yeah, we also had um in our last session, we had a final battle with some skeletons 
which was a lot more difficult than it should have been. Turns out it's really hard to hit skeletons. <laughs> yes, and skeletons do a lot more damage. Mommy ended up dying multiple times, and you had to try healing her. She didn't her. die. She well, was she just incapacitated. Incapacitated. Sam was nice enough not to kill any of us off. Yeah, uh, you ended up having to try and heal her, and I ended up, and we both ended up, and we both ended up having, like, very little um, health points left. I ended up having one, and you had, like, the greatest amount because you weren't really attacking. Because I was a coward just sitting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were basically using Mommy as a body shield. Well, she was, Mommy was my meat shield there. Yes. Uh, so we had fun with that. We did some other stuff. Uh, before the holiday, I was fortunate enough to actually score an Xbox Series S. I was going for an X or a PS5, but... I had to settle on an S, and we resurrected a couple of games, one of which you had played before the other one that you hadn't, um, that were Disney-themed. Why don't you tell us about those? So the first one was called Disney Adventures, Disneyland Adventures, and it was basically like this cute little game that had like the map of Disneyland, and it had all the iconic characters in different areas and basically what you did was you got quests from them some of them you basically just found objects and you um had to bring it back to the characters others were a bit more complicated to where you went into actual attractions which i definitely have to say they came up with some really creative concepts like with the haunted mansion attraction they they have different levels in each of them that uh, depending on what your task was, you have to complete it in a certain level. And um, for the Haunted Mansion one, the first level you ended up falling through um, where you normally enter. And it was basically you had to try and... Um, you basically fell through an endless hallway and you had to avoid objects, move around, and match poses in order to get through it. The second part was then you went and had a flashlight and you had to explore the get get out of the mansion because you were basically trapped in it and you had a flashlight and you had to try and get rid of the ghost for points you couldn't let them scare you and you had to run through the house so what was the second game this um, is one you hadn't played before yeah this is one i hadn't played before um it was a pixar themed game with a similar concept but instead of disneyland it was a Pixar themed land. Um, and basically it w it incorporated, uh, the movies of Up, Cars, Ratatouille, Toy Story, uh, Finding Nemo and Dory, and Incredibles. Incredibles. So how do you like that one? I liked it as well. It had a similar game engine, and basically there were three different levels for each of the movies, and it was kind of cool because each of the kids are shown to be the f fans of um, the specific franchise or movie. And it's kind of cool because they kind of recreated some of the characters that you play the scenes as, as the kids. Because, like, when you go into the Cars one, there's a kid... There's a kid who kind of represents Mater and likes to play as Mater. Has, like, a... He has a rugged... He has a ruggish look to him, and you kind of, like, get why they like to play those certain characters, because they s look and act like them. Right. So, all in all, what do you think? Uh, good games? Yeah, they're good games. I like them. Nice. So, one of the other things that we did, we actually got a couple of games for the holidays, uh, you know, Christmas or Hanukkah. And one of the games that we got, I had gotten, Mommy got me for Hanukkah, called Teledoodle. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of an interesting, uh, they, they bill it as a, an interesting illustrated, uh, version of the game telephone. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how this game works? So basically you have multiple players. We had three and basically you each have to pick up a card and each card has uh, one through six numbered and each of the numbers has a certain word and when you and after you all roll the die to find out which number you get you have to draw that specific item like if I ended up rolling a two I'd look on my card and for two it would be pepper 
and I'd have to draw it on, and I'd have to draw it under a minute, and everyone else would have to draw their objects. And then what we would do is that we would write down our word on one page, then write down, then draw that word on the other page, and when we, pa- and then we pass it to the other player, and when, and then they have to only look at the page where the drawing is and try and guess what the word is. So the way we play it, um, because the game kind of didn't really state it too well for us, is that that person has to look at the first page. Then they guess, they guess what their, they guess what that is on the second page, the page after the drawing. And then on the third page, they have to draw what they think it is. And then they find, and finally you pass it to the last person. And then looking only at the third page, on the fourth pl- page, they have to guess what the word actually is. So kind of, kind of fun game we had there. Some mm-hmm. uh, interesting interpretations I think we had on some yeah. of them. My favorite one was when I had to draw a barrel and I ended up like making a barrel, didn't know if it was going to be obvious, so I put a pirate hat on it. Right. And you guys thought it was a bottle of poison, poison. Yeah. Beca- <laughs> because the top <laughs> had a skull. Put the skull and crossbones on, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting uh, exercise in how people's minds work visually. Yep. So the other game you got and you got it for Christmas, right? Was it Christmas or Hanukkah? Hanukkah. It was Hanukkah again, and it was Jumanji. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was only two players, so I didn't get to play that one. So tell us how that one went. Uh, that one was kind of interesting. Basically, what you have to do is you have, t- you have, depending on what color you have, you have a certain path that you go through, um, and you roll the die, and you have to go through a certain path. And there are different spaces that you can land on. One of the spaces is, the common space is the blank space, where you have to pull a danger card. And you have to use, um, I don't know what it was, a code, a decoder, where you have to, where you have to, where there's an image and a number. Um, and whatever the image is, there's a second, there are two different, there's another die where it has those, it has one of those images, um, and basically, like, if I said axe, um, what mommy would have to do is I'd flip over the timer that they had, and she'd have to try and roll an axe or an hourglass, because that was a wild. And and if she did it in time before the timer stopped, I got to move up as many spaces as the number on the up, the number on the card said. And if she didn't get it in time, I'd have to put it in the doom, in, uh, the doomsday, in the doomsday aisle, where basically if you get ten cards for the doom, for doomsday, then, uh, the game ends and you're both dead. Wow, that's rough. Yeah, so basically you both have to save each other from the danger cards by rolling the die, um, so that was what the blank space did. There was also another one with the rhino space where basically you can put a rhino in front of your other player and they have to try and roll to get out of it to stop the rhino and every time they failed to roll they'd have to move back and the dino and the rhino would always be one move in one move in front of them but we really didn't use that. Okay. Um, so you know, a lot of time over the holidays, home together with the family here. We had a lot of different activities to do. Um, I was off for a week and a half, which to me was agonizing because I knew I had so much stuff that was piling up at the office that needed to get done. Um, you were off for two weeks, a little over two weeks. Well, a little under two weeks. A little under two weeks. Uh, mommy was off about the same amount of time I was. So we had a lot of time together. Um, what do you think? You think you enjoyed the time, the family time? Yeah, I liked it. Um, we definitely had a lot of family bonding, and I really appreciated that, since normally during the week we really don't have that much time, especially since you leave the house and me and Mommy have school and work. Yeah. So. Good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed the time. I did, too. Yep. So we're going to take our last break here. We're going to come back and we'll talk about 
some of the challenges of getting back into the routine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we all face those. And uh, we'll take a look ahead and talk about what we think is uh, on the horizon for us. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to our year in review episode here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about getting back into the routine. Uh, we just talked about before the break that we all kind of had an extended downtime away from work and school. And, you know, invariably during that time, our sleep schedules get messed up, our eating habits get messed up, and we get all kind of out of our normal routines. And it's oftentimes a struggle to get back into it. So let's talk sleep routine. You know, I was having all kinds of trouble sleeping because of the, the shoulder pain that I've been in. Um, so my, my sleep schedule's kind of been off whack for quite some time now. How did it affect you? Were you staying up late? Were you sleeping in late? What was some of the stuff that was outside your routine that you were normally, that was happening during the break? Well, I was staying up late and sleeping late, um, which is definitely not my custom because I normally wake up at 6.30 and go to bed at 9. Right. So how late were you sleeping until? Um, I was typically, I was typically sleeping until like 8 or 9 even. And how late were you going to bed? Uh, 11. So you sh kind of really... What you did was you shifted your schedule an hour or two to the later later side of things. Yeah. And uh, we tried gradually to get you back into that schedule before school actually started. Were we successful with that? I mean, yeah. I definitely had a pretty decent I had a pretty big struggle on Sunday night when I had to get when I knew I had school in the morning tomorrow but the good thing was it was more of a flex day and like a introductory back end so it wasn't completely horrible right um but I definitely had trouble sleeping that night um I ended up having <laughs> it wasn't just like that my schedule was messed up it was just I was worrying a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you tend to do that. You know, you were you were concerned about assignments, you were concerned about grades, you were concerned about getting back into things. Uh, but one of the things that mommy and I were were kind of trying to instill upon you was the fact that, you know, you're not the only person. You know, it, it'd be different if you had gone on vacation for a week and all this happened and then you came back and you had to jump right back in where things were because everyone was still in the thick of things. But what did you find? Did you find it that everyone was sort of easing back in or did you have to hit the ground running Monday morning? The good thing was everyone was just easing back in and it was really nice. This week was actually pretty easy except for history. But uh, but before we left, I was actually kind of confused on that as well. So it didn't really come to a big shock, but I was able to get back into it. Good. So it sounds like for the most part, uh, the the downtime didn't really throw off your schedule or your routine too much. And it sounds like by the end of the first full week back, you seem to be back in the swing of things, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So any, any, uh, 
lingering effects of that or anything? Are you tired? Are you fatigued or anything? I mean, I am. I have been feeling like tired sometimes, um, but it's not really for too long and not really a lasting effect to the point where like I'm like, oh, I need to like take a nap or something. Good, good. So you're we're pretty much back into the swing of things without too much of a problem. And I'm the same way with work too. You know, I struggled the first day or two at work overwhelmed with stuff and you know since then i've kind of caught up and everything's back to normal so let's take a look ahead one of the things that a lot of people do uh this time of year when the new year changes is they have new year's resolutions so do you have any new year's resolutions oh uh, i mean kind of like, I have hopes. I wouldn't, like, say they're entirely resolutions because I know not a lot of people follow their resolutions. Um, my, like, hopes, one of them is just to exercise a bit more. Um, because of school, I had that kind of exercise, uh, going on because of my fitness logs, because my teacher made it mandatory for us to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day. Um, so I had a decent routine where I would basically dance for 20 minutes and then do something else for the extra 10. Um, because, well, I really liked doing Just Dance and dancing to the songs, so. And we got the subscription now, so we have all the songs. Yep. Right. All right, so no, no major New Year's resolutions. I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions either. I think, if anything, you could... You should kind of always strive to live your life a certain way and, you know, having the calendar change to a new year shouldn't really affect that is my opinion. So what things are you looking forward to in the coming year and the rest of this school year? Is there anything that you're interested in, excited about, looking forward to, anything like that? Mm, well, I am interested to see um, how band plays out um, since that it was is, that was funny how band plays out. <laughs> that was not planned, trust me. So, um, I am interested to see how we're going to be doing band because we are going to get more into spring songs, and he is kind of hoping that at some point we might even be able to do like a social distance spring concert possibly wouldn't, or, wouldn't that be nice yeah and we're hoping to change up the meeting so that now we can see all of our faces and have a little bit more human interaction because before we could only really see his face and our own right good well that's that hopefully that works out so one of the things that you had done before the break that we should be hearing about come february is you had applied to participate in the Deffert High School Academy program. And specifically, you applied to the Academy of Engineering and Computer Sciences. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is and what you hope to get out of it? Well, what I, from what I know of, of the Academy... It's basically going to be teach it's basically going to be something that we have for um the whole uh the four years of high school and uh we're gradually going to everyone starts out with the same class and then as you get into the later grades you get more op more and more options for what you want and you get to um, spread out, and you get to learn more about engineering and computer sciences. Very cool. Sounds interesting. Yeah, um, and I'm definitely kind of looking, and I'm pretty look, and I'm looking forward to that because it sounded really cool from the video that they showed us, and I'm, and I have a knack for, I have a knack for science and. I think it would definitely help my creativity as well as ingenuity. Yeah, there's a lot of artwork that's involved there that I think you would enjoy, a lot of digital artwork that, that you can get into. And and I think it'd be a great way of steering your interest towards uh, you know, what you want to do after high school, whether it's college or trade school or, or a profession or something like that. Um, and they offer several different academies. This happens to be the one that, that was the most interesting to you. Uh, but it's definitely something worth uh, worth looking forward to. Now let's flip the coin a little bit there, and let me ask you, is there anything that you might have 
concerns about or worries about? Is there is there a particular class that you're concerned about? Are there activities that are a concern to you or a lack of activities with the current circumstances? Like what are your what are your thoughts moving forward for the rest of the year and 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 what's a a concern on your radar? Well, hmm. I am going to I am kind of interested to see how Pumpkin is going to continue to adjust. So far she's Pumpkin being our our cat. new kitten. Your new kitten. Um and so far she's adapted pretty well. Um she's starting to finally warm up to us by means of letting us pet her and wanting to play more. Um and I've seen a significant impact with her relationship with the other cats. Nice. Nice. That's and it is nice to see her starting to uh, get more affectionate and, and and develop that trust with everyone around her, which, you know, only makes the fact that she stands and she lays down in front of you every chance she gets when you're walking even more adorable. Yeah, and Dorothy has made a significant Im- improvement over just pissing. Indeed she has. Dorothy did not take to her very well uh, initially, and she's definitely getting better. Mm-hmm. So I think that was all we we had to talk about. Nice, easy day today. Uh, We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts and uh, finish up the rest of the podcast business that we have. Go for your closing thoughts. Okay, so I'm pretty sure everyone out there already knows, but 2020 was a crazy year. (laughs) To say the least. That's putting it mildly. Yes. And 2021 is hopefully going to at least bring some peace to the crazy year that was 2020. Um, I definitely think it's important to be mindful looking forward, um, but also hopeful. We need, we need to have uh, some good positive vibes going forward because it would make the year al- at least a little better. Amen to that. We definitely need a better year this year than we had last year. Yeah. Uh, before we go, I do want to bug everyone again to subscribe to the podcast so you get all of our weekly podcasts. We should be back on schedule now uh, moving forward for the foreseeable future. Uh, we have a new year, although our season doesn't flip until next month. So... Uh, I've had the date written down and I didn't bring it up with me. I think it's somewhere around February 8th or so. We'll mark our third season of podcasting, believe it or not. Nice. Uh, We'll be hitting that century mark of 100 episodes coming up soon. We got to have something or plan something special for that. But in the meantime, you can subscribe to the audio versions of the podcast. uh, If you look for Insights into Teens or the video versions of all of our podcasts, Uh, are listed as Insights into Things, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Castro, Amazon, Pandora, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, We would also invite you to to reach out to us and give us feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of all of our videos. On YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We will be back on schedule streaming six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Audio versions of this podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, you can find us at insights into things and links to all of these and all of our episodes. And show notes, uh, transcripts, uh, uh, what are we? We're hosts. You can get host profiles and everything on our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. And that is it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. You're all over the place. I know. know.